Welcome along to our webinar on digital digital marketing. And really, I've, I've mapped out sort of seven steps to success when we're starting to look at digital marketing. So our last webinar, we looked at, you know, what's a digital marketing strategy look like? I now want to get into a bit more of the detail about what we actually do to make it happen because, you know, behind sitting behind every great strategy are some operational steps that we need to take. So so the seven steps that I've mapped out are pretty, pretty straightforward, but they're in a, a logical order. So we need to have a strategy first. So we need to be clear on what our digital marketing strategy is. We then need to be having looking at making sure we've got a website that works. And as we've discussed in previous um, um, you know, e-marketing sort of strategies, your website is the absolute core um, of your digital marketing strategy. So until you've got your website right, doing a whole lot of this other stuff behind that from steps three to seven is it can be can be ineffective, right? I'm not saying it's useless, but um, unless we've got a good website, it's a bit ineffective. Okay, so so we're going to talk about a website that works. We're then going to going to talk about email marketing because once you've got your website, it works, and you start to drive traffic towards your website by using email. The email is a great medium to use because your audience is captive. People may not read your email, but at least it gets into their inbox and you get in front of them. Um, and in more detailed webinars and stuff, we will talk about, about why that's important from a, I guess, a branding perspective that, that we get an understanding of, of, of that. Um, and then um, what email allows us to do, though, is to get in front of people, whereas social media is very passive. Right, so so email is very direct. Social media is very passive. If I haven't logged on to LinkedIn or Facebook in the last um, in the last three days, which I haven't, then I haven't seen any posts that you that you guys have made. So um, so I've, I've missed all that stuff with, with so social media. Likewise, there's no point in, in investing lots of money in search engine optimization unless your website is really working. You know, and um, um, and you know. Uh, I think it's really important that we understand that you can drive traffic. You're really driving, you know, activity through an incapable system if, if you don't have your website working properly. And then once you've got, you know, you can start talking about broadcast activities, webinars, and all those sorts of things when you get a bit down the track. Now, I'm not saying you can't do all these things in isolation, but if you start to get a bit of a system together, they work a lot better. And the last thing we'll talk about briefly is, is leverage. How can we get some leverage in this space? So let's just quickly work through the seven steps. All right. So before we do that, I just I really want to talk through some key concepts. I want you to keep in the back of your mind while you're thinking about this digital marketing stuff. First one is this is this model, courtesy of Deloitte. You know, you've got to have a clear strategy. You've got to have the capability to deliver. Make sure you've got the capability. And if you don't have the capability personally, you need to either buy it in or or get through some training and 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 grow it, or and then we need the commitment. We need to make sure we've got the commitment to follow this through. All right, so no matter what strategy you're doing in your business, that's the structure we need to follow. And in digital marketing, it's just the same. So that's a really important concept. The second concept is this notion of trust and this trust equation. All right, so the trust equation uh, developed by uh, David Meister and a gentleman called Green um, is all about, you know, you need to build credibility, reliability, and intimacy, and then demonstrate a real self-orientation towards the client, not to yourself. Okay, an orientation, sorry, an orientation towards the client, not yourself. Um, because if you're, if you're too salesy and too self-oriented, then what happens is people just see straight through that, all right, and they don't trust you. Because every time you try and do something to them, you're trying to sell them something, all right? So, so the objective in digital marketing is actually to, um, to demonstrate that credibility, reliability, intimacy, but also by giving of yourself and giving good information away, a bit like we're doing here tonight, um, with not necessarily any expectation of return for it, then um, people start to understand you and your capability um, and then are more likely to buy from you in the future. So, so you know, this trust equation is really important. Some of the concepts that, you know, I think when you're working through those seven steps that, and I've, I've pulled these out because I've had conversations with people lately who just don't seem to be getting it. So I thought, I'll actually just pull it out and make it quite black and white. So, so with digital marketing, your primary aim is to acquire contact details, primarily emails from prospects, so that we can market and sell to them. All right, so that's the, that's what we're talking about. We're here for digital marketing. At the end of it, we want to actually get some outcomes out of it, whether you're selling widgets or 
airline tickets or services in some way or products or whatever, marketing is all about generating leads that you can convert into sales, all right? Your prospects are going to enter your marketing system from a number of different channels, okay? And that's why we need to funnel them towards um, a common place, which is your website. We're going to have a number of nurturing processes or sequences that we use to build trust and demonstrate capability, okay? That's really important. So a couple of different ways to enter this sort of stuff. And you're going to give away some great stuff for free, right? So you're going to give away some of your, some of your good ideas and some of your good stuff for free. Now, I'm not suggesting you give products and stuff away for free, but you might give some product knowledge and other things away for free that demonstrate your capability. We're going to use some conversion tools to move prospects through the system. So you, you're going to have some you know, landing pages and other things that convert or um, other tools to do that. And we're going to use technology to automate the, the Jesus out of this sort of stuff. You know, the crap out of it. So we're going to use technology to get some great stuff there. And then we go along the way, you're going to have to monitor what you're doing and adjust things to optimize your outcomes because this stuff is not set and forget, all right? It's not set and forget and set and leave it, okay? So there's some key concepts that I really wanted you to think through. So step one is develop a digital marketing strategy, okay? And we talked about that at our last webinar. Um, this is our digital marketing plan. And basically, you're going to, you're going to, map out a whole part of this plan in the first couple of steps um, before you start to, to move on. So this, this plan is all about helping you just sort of get the, the high points of the digital marketing strategy. Now, is it all the components you need for an effective digital marketing strategy? No. Think about it as the executive summary of what you're going to need to have. All right, so it's a one-page executive summary. So the key elements you're going to need to have are key elements of strategy. You're going to need to have some strategic foundations in your business that you can pull upon a clear marketing goal, some clear clear target markets or avatars, and products or services that you're going to market. You need to have a good think about those sort of stuff. So strategic foundations, I think, are things like in your business, you know, clear understanding, what's our vision, what's our purpose, what are our values, what are our objectives, what are we trying to achieve, all right? So they're important that we get those things right. And I'm assuming that you're having that you have these things as part of a strategic plan or something else you, that you've done. Um, if you haven't, then give me a yodel and I can, you know, I can plug you into an online course or I can help you out to make sure that you get some of these strategic foundations right in your business. We also then need to set a clear marketing goal, right? And there's different ways of doing that, and we'll we'll talk a bit more about that um, in other in other times. But you know, a, a clear marketing goal, something like you want to. You know, just an example, acquire 100 new clients by the 31st of December at an average of $500 per client net profit, okay? So there's a structure to it. We call it VQTQ. We've talked about it in previous webinars. Um, but you want to set yourself a clear goal. What am I hoping to do? And you may even set that goal. Could be part of that. Could be your acquisition cost, yeah? So we want to acquire those clients at $500 per net profit for a net acquisition of $50, per client or something like that. So then you can think about what marketing spend are we going to have. And that, in case you may give away some product, you may give some other stuff away that, um, uh, that's important and valuable to the customer. All right, so we've set some goals. One of the things, clear things we need to set is an understanding of our avatars. And again, we've spent some time in previous webinars talking about target markets and customers. And this avatar model is a great model. What are their frustrations and what are their fears? What are their wants and their aspirations? And then what do they look like and smell like? So what are the demographics? You know, age, location, geography. What's their identity? The, the personal traits that make them different. You know, they're innovative, you know, family oriented, you know, those sorts of things. So map out your avatars and get them really clear because then you can, you can write your marketing and you start to, you know, when you're putting um, content together and lead magnets and that sort of stuff, you can do them with an avatar, a clear avatar in mind. Okay. In terms of products, and we've, we again we've talked about this um, in the past. We, if we, if you're going to do stuff on on your website, remember, and we'll talk a bit about the the style of lead magnets and stuff you want to have in the past. In, in a bit later on, we'll talk about those. But you, you know, for visitors, first time visitors to your site, they're going to be cold, right? And you want to give them some. We want some sort of simple opt in um, um, process for them where they, you know, you give them something of great value, a checklist or a template or a infographic or five key whatevers, and they, they opt into that, and um, and you, you get their name and address, and therefore you've got something then, a name and email address, and you've got something then to market, 
market to them because you're, you're still a cold prospect to them. For those that are warm prospects for you, then you, you and are curious about what it is you've got to offer and the topic you've got to talk about and the things you're doing, then they're sort of warm, right? And 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 these are sort of a more of a conversion process here. So the topics like this are like a webinars and those sorts of things. So where you can actually, um, you know, get people engaged who are interested. Um, and it's not about being hard sellable, I don't believe, but um, it's about giving good quality information that then makes people want to do things. The other thing it could be is a, a short video training program or something else that's really specific to your business. You don't have a business that where you're selling. Um, I don't know, dock systems on the uh, on the uh, you know boat, boat docking systems for the canals on the Gold Coast. All right, well you might have a thing on how to maintain your do your boat dock or what to look for in a great docking boat docking system and how you can customise it to be your needs. I don't know something a bit different, and it could be two or three videos that people watch, um, and then you can say, well, you know, how how about you come on and uh, and be part of that. And then for prospects that are hungry, you know, the hot stuff that are ready to buy, and it's only 1% to 3% of the market at any time is ready to buy from you now, we need to have a, you know, call me now, sign up sign up for this special deal sort of offer. You need to make them an offer um, that, that, they're, that fits with them and you'll pick up a small percentage of that marketplace. So in doing that, you know, it's important we understand what our products and services are. So what are the free trust building products, the lead magnets that you're going to offer? You know, it could be a template, a video sequence, a report, an infographic, uh, I don't know. It could be a free sample of your product, that sort of stuff. What are the end products? You know, so what are we ultimately trying to sell? You know, uh, do we have an entry level product and then a mid level service and a high level service? Well, so, so what's the sequence we want to sell in and what, what are we looking to sell people on and then how is that going, going to work? All right, so that's the sort of foundational stuff we need at the front end. So we get our, our, the front end of this digital marketing strategy. So this is this sort of area of, the, of that plan that we did for you a while ago. All right, so uh, I'm not going to ask, but let's see. Are there any questions, <laughs> in case the tech doesn't work, are there any questions you've got at this stage of the, uh, of the webinar on, the, on that sort of first step? The first step's a big step, but a lot of it's about planning and thinking. Did it make sense? Did that not make sense? Just type into the Q and A area if you can. I'll try and keep it corralled to one area rather than the chat area, if that's possible. Yep, made sense to you, Craig. Good. Thanks, Andrew. Excellent, Michael. Made a bit of sense. Great stuff. All right. Any questions? Yeah. Okay, Kev. Well, if you've got any questions, mate, you come back to me later. All right, Bill. Thank you. Excellent. Um, Michael, thanks. Okay. So, if anybody's got any questions, we can all come come back to them later. Thanks, Chris. We'll come back to them later. So that's so that's fine. Um, thanks, Sarah. Okay. Good. All right. So let's move on. Um, thanks, Lara. Um, we will move on and let's go to step two. Right. So step two is about creating a website that works. And as I said, the website is the core of this. We need to have a great website that really works for us, okay? Um, that, that converts people, um, moves them through a cycle, and so there's some key components in doing this that we're going to talk through now. So the key elements of a website at work, that works are, um, the first step is in that is, I think in, if you've got a current website, you need to review it, okay? And there's some websites around, um, there's Market Grader and some others that'll do a, a review of your website and help you out. Um, I think it's worthwhile having a, you know, a fresh pair of eyes look at your website as well. So, um, and I mean, I did that, had a look at a client's website today and gave them a short video feedback on that. Um, so, um, you know, sometimes it's just useful to have somebody else look at it, but certainly we'll use tools like Market Grader and some others to, to help you out in that space. Um, all you do is type your URL in and they send you a, a report back that tells you about how, how well your website functions. You need to set up a website, and, and if you're setting up a new website, um, you'd be mad to do it in anything but WordPress, and make sure that you've got a responsive WordPress website put together, okay? And there's some great people around it. Um, you know, John is on the website, uh, on the webinar with us tonight. He's got a great business on the Gold Coast, helping people set up webinar, uh, set up websites and that sort of stuff. Happy to put you in touch with, uh, with John, and I'm sure there, are, there may be others even logged in tonight that, that do that sort of stuff as well. 
there's some great people out there that can actually help you build a really good website fairly cost effectively you get up and away. The stuff you need to think about is what are the lead magnet or two that you're going to build? So what's your first lead magnet kind of going to be? All right? Um, and what's that, going, that's, what's that going to look like? Um, I'll talk a bit about lead magnets in a minute. We're also, I'll talk about a digital sales map and a sales process map. And then we need to, out of those, we also need to set up some landing pages. Now, landing pages, pages are just really dedicated web pages for sales, right? So when, when somebody follows a link from social media to your, your website, um, and they go to somewhere to click on it. So you probably, um, we used to set up websites, landing pages for, um, our webinar. So when you click on the thing, register for it, it takes your website, tells you a little bit about it, and says sign up here or get your details here, that sort of stuff. That's just a landing page, okay? So there are dedicated web pages specifically around selling, and there's some, some great opportunities, great services to help you do that. The other thing to think about are if you've got, um, a sequence of things we'll talk about in a minute. You may want to put in pop-ups on on exit. So when people go to leave, when they when they say come in and they click on your uh, to download your free web magnet, your free lead magnet, it, and as they're about to exit, it might pop up and say, "Thanks for downloading our lead magnet. Would you also be interested in maybe our video program or a trial of X Y Z blah blah blah?" And you'll get a proportion of people that will pick up on that. Importantly, I think your website needs to have some some elements that demonstrate capability. All right, so you need to have a a blog um, with a minimum of three to five anchor pieces in it. So those anchor pieces are not just general things. I think they need to be um, blog articles that demonstrate your capability. All right, I find too many people putting blog articles up which are informative. But don't demonstrate their capability, you know. So typically, I see accountants putting up things. You know, there's a been a change in the tax act or something. All right, well that's okay. But I'd rather you told me there's been a tax change in the tax act, and this is what it means for you, and this is how we can leverage that in order to help you and your business, rather than just there's been a change in the tax act, you know, um, which is easy to put up because there's lots of services that do that. I think it's largely ineffective. I mean, you know takes a special sort of person to read up, up updates on, on the Tax Act. My apologies to those who, who like reading the Tax Act. Um, you know, and I think all of this you need a blog calendar. So we need to be consistent in our marketing. I don't think you can put up something every day, but if you're going to put out something every week or every month or whatever, make sure that you, you're consistent you're putting that out. Okay? So website's really important. Um, so about lead magnets. So lead magnets, you know, a high value um, uh, to the client products that you give away in exchange for their basic contact information. As I said, reports, templates, infographics, or whatever. Now we've talked about this in past in other webinars, but I think it's such a powerful, a powerful um, thing to think about that it's it's really worth um, repeating again. So if you think about that your offers from the perspective of a of a of a prospective client or customer, they look at things whether they're high value or low value, whether they're safe or risky. So typically what we do is offer them an email or newsletter or something else, which is quite safe, but it's generally perceived as quite low value. Now, it has a, has a point which we can talk about another time. I think it has a valuable point as part of your contact program. But from a, a pure sales point of view, you know, it's regarded as a bit crappy, all right? We do these other things. We offer free sales appointments. And, and I do this as well. I've done this as well in the past and continue to do it a bit because there's occasionally people take you up on it. But what people largely see is not necessarily sure if they're going to get any value out of it. And they see it as being risky. So they see it as a bit of a trap. So they've got to be a fairly warm prospect before they're going to click on that because they think we're all this amazing salesperson that, that as soon as we get our hooks in them, they will never be able to get away and they'll end up walking away with all the stuff they don't want, you know, steak knives and other things they just don't want um, because we're such good at sales. When most people aren't like that anyhow um, and are not that good at sales either, um, but most people say it's too too risky. So a cold prospect is very unlikely to click on a link that says, you know, click here for a free call, you know, 10-minute call with Russ to discuss X, Y, Z. Okay, it's just that's just nature. On the higher value side of things, though, you know, ebooks and video courses, as people say, those are really high value. But because they're going to invest some time and some energy, some of their own time and energy in in delivering, in reading them, or watching them, or whatever, they see them as a bit riskier. They're just a bit riskier. They're not quite, you know, the value's there, but 
That's it. So there's a bit of a gap there, but they're things worth doing for very warm prospects in that in that sort of mid range that we talked about. The stuff that's both safe and high value is simple stuff: templates, checklists, reports, infographics, and and that's why they work really well as lead magnets because people go, yeah, that looks like really good value, and I'll give you my name and my email address for that, knowing that I can unsubscribe from your mailing list if you spam me too much. Okay, so when you're thinking about your lead magnets, think about think about those things. All right, so think about how we can come up with some stuff that fits in that sort of snap and gap space in in your business. All right, then we're going to think about what's the process of moving when they come in for a particular channel, pick up a particular lead magnet. What's the tool we're going to use to try and convert them from that into a, a um, uh, into a higher value product? And then if that doesn't work out, what sort of follow-up process do, do they drop into? Do we drop them into, into a follow-up funnel? And just so you know what I mean, one of the things we need to do is map out this sales process. So, you know, people come in the door, come to the website, we offer them from C stuff, and, you know, they say yes, we get the free stuff, then we offer them something else, we offer them something else. So this is a, you know, a typical, you know, consulting, coaching sort of model. Um, at the end, when they say no to everything, or they the exit the service and everything, but if you get their email details, they sit here in this sort of long-term nurture process where we we send them emails regularly, we invite them along to a few webinars and other things, and we occasionally I make them an offer. Would you like some some of our service? Those that pick their stick their head up, go yeah, I would. Then they you you carry on with the sales process. But I think until you've got this sales this sort of digital sales process map worked out for you and your business, it's going to be a bit it's going to be a bit tricky because we don't know how to follow up and what we're going to do. So this is all about making it being systematic. Remember, I said we're going to systematize it. Well, we can use autoresponders. We can use a whole heap of techniques in here that mean that we um, look after people really well. It doesn't have to be disingenuous so that we're we're not. Um, not spamming them and not doing other things with them, and we're not, we're not. Um, but at the same time, it can be relatively um, systematic in what we do. Okay, so that's the sales sales plan map. The blog, I said, three to five um, anchor articles. Anchor articles, high value, high quality articles that demonstrate relevant capability. All right, good headlines, some quality images, strong call to action on every one of those, and if you really want to, put a short video in them that summarises your blog for extra impact. Yep, um, and uh, I find those things work, work really, really well. Okay, so when you're thinking of content, um, you know, make sure that you're, you're working through a few things, you're thinking through a few things. That your content's digestible, it's in small enough chunks, so you don't wanna have a 50-page 50, you know, 50 document for them to read, so it's digestible. It needs to solve a real problem for your, for your client base or your, or your customer, your potential customer. And it also needs to support your competitive advantage. All right. So this is some work done by James Atkins, a colleague of mine, um, fantastic marketer. And um, this is his his model on making sure your your content hits that sweet spot in the middle where it's digestible, solves a great problem, and and helps somebody with it. it helps reinforce your competitive advantage with the client. Okay. So it's about writing stuff or getting stuff written for you. Just like that. Simple way to do that is set up a blog calendar and program so that you deliver consistently. So map it out in advance, even if it means that you sit down and take a day off and write, you know, write a heap of content and then just schedule it to go out over time. All right. So that's step two. Website, pretty important. It's probably the most important part. So we're going to fly through the rest of this um, um, presentation. But yeah, um, it's probably the most important part. So before I move on, any questions about, um, um, about websites? WordPress only? Yes, Craig. Yeah, WordPress. Um, WordPress is just, most people use it. Um, you can get programmers, any program in the world can uh, can help you out with it pretty much. They can pick up where somebody's left off with it. And um, uh, so if you get left in the lurch by your web developer or whatever, um, you can do it. There are other programming languages around, but they're just not as popular. The other great thing about WordPress is, uh, you know, they, they build them responsive so that um, and that's really important criteria that your website is spot responsive in WordPress. Responsive means that it automatically readjusts for tablets and um, and smartphones. All right, so your web your web page all looks good on all those three things. And the other great thing about WordPress is there's a whole heap of plugins. So if you just want to add on a shopping cart to it, there's, there's the plugins are relatively simple, just to plug in, and they they almost plug and play stuff. 
um, a, a good web, web developer will help you with all that sort of stuff. Any other questions about websites? Andrew, I guess it depends on how much stuff you've got. I, I think I think it's so easy now to build a website, and I don't think your website has to be complex. So I think you're almost better just to start from from scratch, um, and um, and it's relatively easy to transfer the content across um, and build that up. Um, but um, yeah, I think I think you know your questions. Do you strip back or start again? Or, or you know, I would think it's probably just as easy to build a new website. You know, and I think. I think we've moved away from sort of huge websites to back back to simple websites that get straight to the straight to the point uh, for people. I don't think it has to be enormously complex. Um, so it's probably going to be just as easy to start again. And if your content's good, you can just reuse a whole of your content um, in a different format. So a client has just done that really well. All right, thanks. All right. Okay. So no other questions, and we'll just push on. Right, so step three, email marketing, you know. So email marketing, um, as I said, really important because it goes direct into people's inbox and um, you don't have to wait for them to turn up on Facebook to, you know, to see. Um, I think the key elements of it are set up a regular email newsletter. Uh, when I say newsletter, in the good old days, you used to put, you know, six or seven um, um, articles into a newsletter and send it out. The tracking that we did on our um, on our newsletters, we found that people weren't reading any more than two articles ever, and most people just went write an article and went, "Oh, it was really good," and then I'll come back and read the rest later, and never got there. So we found that we could send out a newsletter that had one, maybe two articles in it, and then lately, I found it's just as effective if you send one good quality article on a regular basis. So it takes a lot of the workload out of it for the same sort of impact. All right, um, you can then set up. Um, email autoresponders to, to nurture people. So if you if you want to, you know, if people come on and sign up for your, you know, your program X or take on your lead magnet, you can then follow them up with a series of emails that send out something and say, thanks very much for downloading our thing. Um, can we give you a hand with that? Look, here's another video you might be interested in that might explain it a little bit better. Um, and you can you can actually use some of those things to nurture them um, along the way. Um, I think you just got to be careful that you don't go crazy and send them an email every day for the next three months. Um, that would be, you'll get so many people just going, what the heck's going on, and just bail out of that. The other thing is worthwhile doing is creating a sales or appointment focused call to action email, um, and uh, we, which you send out regularly. And remember I said you put people in, we nurture them, and every now and then we, we prod them with something. Um, we talk a little bit about that. Um, you know, I guess um, make sure it's part of a 90-day contact tech program. We've talked about 90-day contact programs in previous webinars um, and videos. If you're um, unsure of that, you'll find uh, on the Shift website, you'll find a, a video on 90-day contact programs. So go and look it up, but um, it's pretty important that everything works together. Talked a bit about um, autoresponders. They just automate your follow-up. Um, the sales call to action email, you can do some amazing stuff with some simple nine-word emails. Um, and um, there's a great technique around that. And if you're interested, just flick me an email and I'm happy to send you a, a great linkage to a nine-word email. Um, uh, but very, very powerful um, and very simple. So in the end, what we then end up with is we've, we've started to fill out these elements by working this that step three and step two and step three. We've started to fill out these elements of our, um, of our, um, of our plan. And so we've, so we're starting to get, you know, a good way through it. You've got a website set up. You're starting to send out some emails and starting to do some other stuff. You've got lead magnets. You've got, you've got a whole heap of things ready to go. It's now about starting to ramp them up. Okay. So how do we ramp them up? How do we drive traffic to our, our website? Well, search engine optimization is probably, probably the first thing to be thinking about. So that's about, um, optimizing your website for Google. Um, and while there's some, you know, there's some simple things you can do around SEO, you know, uh, yourself, and that's, you know, you can do some simple things around you know, the basic metadata of your website and other stuff. I actually really think this is one area where you do need to bring in a, a, somebody who really knows what they're doing because it's a dynamic um, art form and I think it needs somebody to work on it for you. So you can expect to pay, you know, between, you know, around $500 a month for somebody to really drive your SEO. 
and my experience and my experience with SEO is um, quite a few years ago I was looking to build um, a business in uh, in Brisbane so I thought I would pay um, uh, my uh, web guy to do um, with David Lichtenberg in Bundaberg he did a great job um, I said Dave let's run some SEO here so we, we ran some SEO and we, uh, wanted to be on uh, page one for um, uh, business coach Brisbane okay so I was already business, page one for business coach Bundaberg not that hard but um, and so I was on page a thousand um, Dave ran the SEO program and had one of his guys working on it fairly consistently and we went from page a thousand to page one I think I was about four down on that page behind a couple of really big hitters and and it was fantastic and it boosted a high bit of traffic to my website my website wasn't set up to convert at all and I didn't get any extra business out of it um, so all these people came to my website, it's all this stuff, not one single person ever contacted me and said, hey, I've been to your website, it was really good, um, or you know, let's do some work together. So so in the end, I just sort of stopped it because it was complete and utter waste of time. So what I was trying to do was force more traffic through an incapable system. So until you've got your website functioning well, I'm not sure if there's that much to be gained in in um, pushing a lot of money through SEO and getting getting high high ranking. That being said, you've got to think that having a higher ranking is better than having a lower ranking for something, um, anyhow. So I'm sure there are people who will argue against me that it's a chicken and egg thing. Um, and once you start to look at your SEO, then you can start to refine your website based on how many people you're getting. It gives you, I guess, uh, an indication of what potentials there in your way, in, in, in the traffic that's coming to you. So SEO, I think you hand it over to the professionals to do basically. All right. You want to focus on the key pages of your website, um, you know, your home page plus any pages that convert or generate revenue for you. That's pretty important. It's what you want to be sending people to. And then the other thing you can do, and you can do a lot of this yourself, is establish your website as an authority. And that's about using bank okay, came and talk now. Backlinking strategies to drive um, uh, traffic to your website. So you can actually publish um, blog articles and videos on, on other websites and other domains and stuff and link them back to your website, um, which actually increases the, the authority ranking of your website and you get a lot more traffic come to it like that. And um, there's some great strategies for doing that. And some of the places that you can do that in are highlighted in this sort of backlinks and, uh, and SEO sort of area here that you might want to think about um, on the plan. So um, uh, that backlinking is something else that we could run a complete program on, but um, it's quite simple to do um, and can have some really big, big effects. All right. So um, any questions about SEO before, before we move on? Well, so Lara saying here um, that. Um, Average cost of five hundred dollars per month, being quoted up to three thousand dollars a month. Yeah, Lara, it depends on what people are going to going to do for you. Um, you know, um, there there it depends who you're talking to, I guess, and what you hope to get out of it, and what what your expectations are. Uh, it actually, good SEO does take a lot of time to do. Um, I've not heard of anybody paying three thousand dollars a month lately, but um, um, but um, that would seem a little bit excessive. But um, certainly. Um, yeah, everything else. Um, uh, different John, was it? Apologies, John. Um, Google business page. Um, I've not got experience with that, Craig, I'm sorry, um, to generate traffic. So um, oh, Google business, sorry, you know, Google business, I know what you're talking about now. Um, yeah, it is actually useful for generating traffic, but again, it's like, it's like, it's like paid search engine optimization, so it's search engine marketing, if you like. So Google AdWords and all those sort of things are a great way to generate traffic to your website and, and you pay for that and that, that works really well. My argument would be, again, if you have websites not well set up to convert clients, then you're going to squander some of that money so your cost of acquisition will go up. The important thing to understand with search engine um, marketing is when you, you're, paying, you're paying for traffic is what sort of conversion am I getting, so what's my real cost of acquisition for each client? Yeah. I hope that makes sense. Um, yeah, definitely, definitely can. In this whole area of search engine optimization, we'd be certainly looking at um, AdWords and um, you know, search engine marketing and stuff as well. Okay. Step five. Then we can get into social media. 
you know, you can do some of these things in parallel. You can do emails and social media and all that stuff in parallel. Once you've got your website up and pumping, then you can really get stuck into social media. And we've spent, you know, previous webinars, we've spent a bit of time talking about social media. So you need to have a clear strategy for what, what, what you're going to do in social media. I think you only need to select a platform or two um, to, be, to be working in, depending on where your target market um, is most prevalent and where you spend most of your time. You know, um, if you're a, a business, a B2B business, then you will have limited success on Facebook, I would think, um, because that's not necessarily where people will be going for looking for those sorts of services. You may jag some clients through it, but you may have much better luck on, on LinkedIn or something. If you're a consumer-based business, then, you know, you, can be, you might be on Facebook, you could be on, on Pinterest if, you, if your particular market demographic works for you, um, or, you know, um, Instagram or something else may, may really work for you. And I know lots of people are, are looking at them. I think with social media, you've got to be really careful about vanity likes, yeah, where you, uh, where, where people, um, you know, will uh, look at your, look at your um, things and go, oh, look at something, you know, so many likes on this. And then when you have a real look at them, most of them are not potential clients, you know, they're, they're friends and family and everybody else are being nice by, by liking you and that's really helpful, but it's, a lot of it's vanity stuff. So at the end of the day, it's how much business you get. Um, out of doing this stuff, and I'd be concentrating on on making sure the, the my conversion rates and looking at the ones I get the best conversions out of, and working on that. And again, it's a moving feast. We've got to do it. So we need to build good profiles in social media, um, whether you're on LinkedIn or Facebook or Instagram or whatever. You make sure you've got a good profile that represents your business well. Um, and then you need to build awareness, connect with people, follow them, share content, like their comments, you know, all that sort of stuff. Make, you know, make make connections. Um, and and build build relationships. Don't be disingenuous when you do it. Um, I think there's a lot to be said by reading people's profiles, taking a real interest in them, understanding people who've got similar interests and uh, um, and all things to you, and and making making a connection with them. Um, and uh, so that's really important. Build credibility then as well. So you can put up, you know, participate in discussions. Best not to be an idiot in the discussions um, because it, you know what's on the internet never goes away. So um, you know, work work on some discussions. Make sure you're mentioning people if you want to connect people into things that you think you'll know, and post unique content that builds your capability. Okay, right. No worries, Arthur. Good to see you, mate. Um, all right. So that's about your social media strategy. You know. So um, you know we're going to get a traffic from from search engine op optimization or um, uh, through search engine marketing, right? Where we pay for it, Google AdWords and that sort of stuff. Then is our website set up with our know, landing pages? You know, is it for mobile and tablet ready? And then what platforms are we going to use? So what, what are the platforms we're going to use that are most relevant to us? So my business, I use YouTube, some email marketing, I use webinars as a, as a thing, and then I'm predominantly on LinkedIn. Okay. Don't, I don't do much else, all right? But for others of you, you may be in lots lots of different places. All right. Um, we'll ask, I'll just finish this couple of bits and then we'll, we'll get some general questions at the end. So broadcast media stuff, you know, is, is stuff like YouTube channels, that sort of stuff. You know, it's about video. You might post that on a wide right variety of places, Vimeo and other places. Could be doing podcasts. You could be doing webinars, like I do. You might be running live events um, that you that 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 you want to do, and that's how you get out to people and how you how you meet people. You might be into trade shows and those sorts of things. You could be doing TV and radio advertising. It can be very effective for the right businesses with the right budget um, and the right return on investment. It can be great. And even print advertising can work uh, for some people in some industries. Okay, I, I think less and less on on, on print, but. Um, Certainly, um, you know, we can, we can be looking at, at some of these things to, to generate, um, activity for us in this, in this broadcast space. But that's, you know, um, I think for most people, you know, we've got to walk before we run and, uh, you know, do some blog articles, get some, get some stuff up. I think a simple one is to use video to actually generate some, some capability for you and give people a chance to, to uh, interact with you as a person. I, I think that's probably a, a, a good thing for most people to do. But apart from that, I think you get other, your other ducks in a row and then you move on to some of these broadcast elements at a later date. All right. And then the last step here in step seven is really around leverage. Okay. So 
you know, I want you to leverage your key elements. Now build your capability, use systems and, and tools to measure performance. It's quite simple. There's, a lot, there's some good stuff out there. There's lots of good data out there from Google Analytics and other places, and you can, you can combine it all into simple dashboards that really help. Um, let's talk about it. So capabilities, just think about what capabilities will you need to, to develop or you need to recruit or acquire for your business in order to execute this. You know, So you may need people to help you with web development, copywriting if you don't write blog articles, video production, graphic design, all that sort of stuff. So if you, if you don't have the capability internal, Let's go and find it. And there's plenty of great people out there, um, particularly with this digital stuff. They can be located anywhere. You don't have to be located around the corner from you. Um, there's uh, lots of great people out there, um, and uh, I'm happy to refer you to some if you if you want some um, if you want some people that I, that I know and trust. Measurement, you know, create simple dashboards. Um, now use Google Analytics. You can pull data out of your social platforms from YouTube and lots of stuff. And it's just a matter of maybe putting them into a simple spreadsheet that, that makes sense for you. Um, and there's some, there's some good ones out there. If you do a bit of a search on, on digital marketing um, dashboards, there's a whole lot of people giving that sort of stuff away for, for free. So well worth grabbing some of that, having a look at it. Virtual assistants. I have, uh, I have two amazing virtual assistants that work for me in the Philippines. Um, they're both full time. Um, and uh, they, they are poked for the moment when uh, they've both got, there's a pretty nasty typhoon. Uh, had a series of nasty typhoons in the Philippines at the moment. They're all they're all being flooded and uh, and and wet. So I, I hope that um, hope they're safe and well. Um, when I last spoke to them, they were. But at the moment, um, we're having a few communication problems. Um, but virtual assistants can be absolutely fantastic to help you get that leverage. Um, and you can you can hire specialists to work for you part time or on a project basis or on a full time basis um, to get some of these projects done for yourself as well. Um, do other things for you in your business. Similarly with contractors, you know, gauge contractors, web design and construction, SEO is a great one, copywriting is another one. I know a couple of good copywriters, so, you know, um, there's, you know, uh, there's lots of places where you can get some help. And then lastly, think about tools and automation. The first one is sort of CRM and, and, and campaign management. So, you know, MailChimp, Active Campaign, GreenRope, Infusionsoft, Entreport, HubSpot, Zoho are all great CRMs with a whole range of automation systems and campaign management systems built into them. Um, so sort of stuff. Just looking at landing pages, Insta page is really good for that. Just looking for social posting, you look at Hootsuite, um, which allows you to post to multiple social media um, sites um, from the one spot, which is which is quite useful. Um, I use personally use Trello for task management, but you know you can use Basecamp and um, a whole lot of other things, and then. With um, backlinking, we didn't talk about it, but there's some tools you can use um, that take one article, one blog article you may have, and spin it, change it slightly, just enough to um, mean that when you post it somewhere else, the the spiders from Google, when they when they search your article, um, realise that it's a different article uh, and don't discount you for putting the same content out all over the internet. And so there's some services that um, enable you to do that, so really, really quite quite useful. Okay, so that's our seven. That's our seven steps. Any questions at this point? Covered quite a lot of stuff, so you know um, I probably filled your brains full. But um, any any questions that spring spring to mind? All right, Bill. Covered a fair bit of stuff. Okay. I'll keep the questions rolling in and I'll, I'll answer them as I go. I know uh, we're just running slightly over the time. Um, so the next steps in the, in the process. So um, last time we ran a little social experiment that worked extremely well, so I'm, I'm, I'm tempted to, to uh, um, ready, I'm tempted to um, uh, do this again. I'll come back to your question in a second, Craig. Um, if you'd like a copy of this, this little blueprint we've pulled together, so it's the seven steps and the bits you need to tick off in each of them, um, go to LinkedIn. So I'll put a post up on LinkedIn in a couple of minutes. Um, go, to, go to LinkedIn, like my post, add a comment, and then I'll, I'll send you a copy of it. Um, worked extremely well last time, and I'm, I'm keen to see whether, whether it'll work again. Um, so we'll do something a little bit, a little bit different there. Um, happy to send you a copy of this um, this digital marketing sort of blueprint, but also of the previous um, plan if you didn't get a copy of our digital marketing strategy. Um, in addition, we've also um, pulling together a course, so my team and I are pulling together a course. I've had 
a whole heap of people talk to me about digital marketing and where can where can we get some more help from? And so I thought the first step we can do is put together a a simple course that covers off basically this seven step step process. We'd have eight modules with it, step by step guidance through each of the seven steps, with templates and resources and links and all that sort of stuff to it. Um, we do some group coaching calls for for ongoing advice, and then you can also have some access to me, uh, depending on which which level you you purchase. Um, if you, if you wanted to to do that, but otherwise you, you can just run the course by yourself and a bit of a DIY option for you. So uh, keep your eye out for that. I'll, I'll let you know when that's uh, when that's up and away. We're about we've nearly got it ready to go. The typhoons sort of knocked us around a little bit, but um, we'll we'll have some stuff ready for you to go soon. So um, that's me for tonight. Um, but um, thank you very much. Um, Craig had a question here. So Google AdWords to a landing page. So um, yeah, that can work really well, Craig, but provided when you get to the landing page, there's something of value there that's going to, um, you know, attract those people. So remember, people coming to you from Google AdWords are going to be, are going to be cold prospects. Yeah? Um, yeah. All right. Um, and, um, you know, so, um, you know, I, I think it's worthwhile, but unless your landing page is actually leading them somewhere, it's fantastic. <laughs> Thanks, John. Yeah, I do know it's a great company. Does a fantastic that. Yeah, www.visualmarketing.com.au. Is that them? I believe you worked with them before. That's great stuff. Um, okay, thanks, Andrew. Thanks, Chris. Good to see you. Um, any other questions, guys? Happy to answer them. Um, but if there's no more questions, we'll, we'll call it a night. <laughs> thanks, John. Okay, good on, Andrew. Guys, the family.